Hey, this question, I love it. It came from a viewer from one of my recent videos on how do you record your screen? So I'm actually gonna go through a couple of different things today when it comes to recording your screen. I mean, honestly, today content is king, right? So the number one search engine in the world is Google. Do you know what number two is? If you guessed YouTube, you would be right. TikTok is right behind that. So people are going to YouTube, YouTube and TikTok and social media in general to do searches. So it's really important if you want to get your product out there that you're pretty comfortable with being able to create some of this content, screen recording included. It's also useful if you're working with clients or if you have a, another type of work project or you're trying to stand up your own side hustle. So in this video, we're going to go through how to screen record, how to record yourself with your screen, and how to put it all together. I'm going to go through some free and paid uh, alternatives for you, so it should hit pretty much every budget. And given that I'm still a beginner, it's going to be super beginner friendly. So grab your coffee or your drink of choice and meet me at the computer. Okay, so first up, let's just talk about what you have built into your current uh, computer. So depending on if you have a Mac or a PC. On a Mac, which I do not have, but you can see here, you just hit the Shift, Command, and 5. Hit those all together, and then you will see on your screen, there is some sort of a recording option. You can take a print screen of your screen this way, or actually record it. So do that. I believe that the video itself will be in wherever your videos folder is on uh, by def by default on your Mac. So uh, there you go. That that one may work really well. Now, alternatively, if you are on a PC like I am, you have a couple of different options as well. You can use the Xbox gaming game bar rather, and that would be by hitting the alt button, your Windows button, and R for record, and that will record your video. The videos will be found in video captures folder in your videos folder on your PC. Now, personally, I don't use that one very often because I find you can only record one screen at a time. So if you're going from, say, recording um, from Chrome to a Word document or Excel, you have to stop and start and do a new recording for each different screen. That's what I have found. So instead, what you can do, you can use your print screen or snippet tool. It's the same thing. So you can get there by clicking uh, the Windows key, Shift and S for snippet. Or what I always do, I just click print screen on my keyboard. That's it. Once you hit print screen, what you'll have to do is drag your cursor around the area of the screen that you want to film. So it will capture everything that's in that window that you've drawn out. So it doesn't matter if you're flipping from a document to a web interface, it will record everything that ends up in that box. Again, when you finish recording and you click stop, all of that information is going to be saved in your videos folder, but it's going to be in a slightly different um, folder. You, it'll be easy to find though. It's all saved for you. So there you go. So those are a couple of the free built it, out of the box in your system tools that you can use to record. But what about if you want to record your screen and yourself at the same time? Well, there's a couple of different th options you can do. What I do is I use the print screen and I'm just recording on my phone right now. So honestly, that's what I do. I record on my phone, record on my screen, and I bring them all together. Stick around for a minute. I will walk through how I actually do that. But for now, there's other tools that are out there. Some of them, they're free or freemium, depending on what it is that uh, your budget is or how often you need to use this, these may be really good tools for you. So let's go check them out. So first up, we're going to talk about Loom. So Loom is like, it's a pretty new system that's out there uh, from what I can gather. So with Loom, you've got a starter package, of course, which is free. 
but you only have up to 20, 25 videos per person. And you can only have one person on this, uh, the free account anyway. So I suppose if you had several different email addresses, you could uh, sign up several different accounts at once. But um, it does seem a little bit limiting. Of course, you are going to have your um, the watermark on here. There's you're just not going to have as many options. Let's just face it. The, the the free it's pretty darn good though. But the business one is twelve dollars and fifty cents. I think that's going to be U.S. dollar. It is U.S. dollars. Um, but you have a 14 day free trial. This one, at least you can use, they have a built in AI editor, which I think is really cool. The AI editor helps not only with editing the videos, which we'll go into soon. Um, but you can also edit the transcript and you remove the loom branding. So I don't know how important that is for you. If you're trying to present something to a client, it may, you may not want to have the loom branding on it, but there you go. And of course, enterprise will have probably a much higher tier and a much higher price point. Let's check out the next one. And that one's Descript. So Descript is another AI powered tool, which looks really cool. I've seen a, quite a bit around this Descript one. The really cool part about Descript um, from what I've seen in different videos and such is that if you are reading off of your screen, right? So if I were to read off of my screen here or my screen over here, maybe not so much over there, it will correct for um, uh, eye contact, right? So if you have to read a script or whatever, it can uh, have you looking, looking like you are looking at the camera which is great if you're not sharing your screen. If you are sharing your screen, it probably doesn't matter. Most people would expect that you need to watch where you're driving, as it were. But um, yeah, so that's kind of a cool feature. This one, there, you can get started for free. I think, I don't know exactly how long the free trial is. Uh, I think it's about 14 days. But it starts off at $12 a month. Creator is 24 and business is $40 a month. Of course, you're more limited, the lower the tier, um, but it is watermark free at $12. The export at 1080p is usually good enough, but a 4K is much better if you've got some more powerful types of videos that you want to put out there in the world. Um, and 30 minutes a month of AI speech. So it really goes up. If you double the price, you really get a lot more value for that. So this is really one of those options. I do not subscribe to either of those and I am not being sponsored by anybody for this video. So this is just what I have found in the world. Now, of course, these aren't the only tools that are out there. There are so many tools. If you do a quick Google search, you'll find that can record yourself as well as your screen at the same time. In addition to these, you can use something like uh, Microsoft Teams or Google Meet. With Google Meet, though, I think you need to have like a Google Workspace account and be on the second level tier of payment. I think that's about $12 a month. Now, of course, if you're really entrenched in the Google ecosystem, that works really well. However, in my experience with that, it does take a couple of hours for the video to render and it's using your webcam. The webcam on my computer, at least, is not great. So I don't really like the quality of that. I think there are ways that you can use your phone as a webcam, which might work. But uh, what I don't like about using Teams or Google Meet is that you don't really have control of where your head is. It's usually a box off to the side. And that's just a personal preference. It works just fine if that's an option for you. Of course, you could do one of those meetings, you know, where you're sharing your screen. Um, and even if you're not able to record that because you don't have, say, a paid plan or whatever, you could try one of these screen recording tools to record your screen as you're sharing your screen in a meeting type of setting on Google Meet or Teams. But it starts to get a little bit complicated. That to me is far more complicated than just recording your screen with a print screen and then recording from your phone. So it, it really, it depends on whatever works for you. So for now, now let's pretend we've only just recorded our screen and we've also 
uh, had a recording on our phone. So how are we going to edit this together? Well, well, let's take a look, shall we? Now, on my desktop here, what you can see, I've got CapCut. So if I click CapCut, next to that is the VideoPad editor. Um, but in CapCut, you can see I have a few projects. You just click Create Project. VideoPad ed editor is very similar. Um, I prefer CapCut only because I use it for TikTok. So I'm, I've gotten really comfortable with it. So from there, just click the Import. You can see video captures, that's for my screen recording. It's just in my videos thing. Just double click that, import it. There you go. So you'll see this right there, like right in this import area. Now I'm gonna click import again because the videos from my phone are actually in my Dropbox. So I'll go into Dropbox, I'll scroll down, I'll click all the videos. Unfortunately, I had to do three, three videos. Click open and then they will import into this workspace. So if you see in this kind of upper left quadrant of the screen is where the video recordings are. And you just drag it down to this timeline at the bottom. It may seem intimidating, but it isn't. If I can do it, anybody can do it. So from here, um, you may have missed it. On the right-hand side, we'll go through it in more detail where I could change the size of me in that screen. But what this one video is, is the intro and the outro. I usually record those together. And then what I could do is I can split it where the intro ends and where the outro begins. So when, if I do that now here, I'm just kind of trimming off the very end of that with the trail. But where I've split, that's where I can put another video in between because I know I've got my intro. I need the video. This is what I'm going to be explaining. And then the outro. So I just sandwich that in between there. Now a quick thing for you, if on your mouse you, you kind of scroll down, like on your mouse, that's going to shorten this timeline or you can make it wider. I like to make it sometimes really wide, right? right? Um, because it's easier for me to kind of see second to second or half a second to half a second if there's anything that kind of jumps around. Now, okay, so I've got this. How do I get me on top of th this thing? How do I get my little circle here? So what we'll do is we're going to drag. So we see that this one was already added. The second one, I'm, I can just drag that and right on top. So it's the layer above. These are all layers. Like think of, you know, so you've got a piece of paper and another piece of paper over top. That's what this is. So the one on the top, if I change this side, just the scale, I scaled it down to 60%. You can see underneath it now the main video. Now, if I go into this mask section, I click a circle and there you go. I just kind of drag that circle around, drag it around so I get myself centered in it. Boom. That circle's a bit big, but I like how it's framed. So now I can take this whole piece and just scale it down. I can move me. I usually like to just kind of go to the bottom right hand corner and that's all I do. Right. So now I can just kind of continue on. Now, unfortunately, that video split on me. So I had to do it. I've, I've got two bits that I'm going to have to do this and, and do just do a rinse and repeat to the second video and just drag it on the timeline as a layer above the video or the screen recording. See, and there it is. You're going to see at the very bottom there, it looks like an audio file, which it is. It's because my microphone also cut out for this particular video that I'm trying to just to show you. So there you go. But on the left, what you can see, this spaces, this, if I had it set up, I would be able to then share whatever I'm doing on my computer, on my phone and vice versa. Through here, audio, that swish, that's a sound effect. You can drag that down to the timeline as well. If you want a background music, you can drag this all right down to the timeline. Just like this, boom, that's where the audio goes. You can, if you have Pro, obviously there's a lot more selection, but even without Pro, there's quite a few music clips, sound bites that are available to you. And you can see just how long each of them are at the bottom where I just pointed it out. Here, look, all of the different types of, um, yeah, so you have TikTok sounds as well, but different genres, TikTok sounds, if you linked up your TikTok account, which I didn't, you can put text 
which is, I think, really amazing. But again, a lot of these are just, um, go and stickers. All of this is stuff. If you've used CapCut for TikTok or if you've used TikTok at all, this is going to be very familiar. It's just on your computer as opposed to via your phone. So this is all kind of the same thing. These transitions can be sick. I love them. Like there's some of them are just beautiful. Um, a lot are pro, but there's a lot of free options as well. But what I would suggest, your adjustments, this is for, you know, like color correcting and all of that. I'm not really very good at that stuff. I don't really understand it enough. But if you are good at that, then great. The templates. If you've used TikTok, then you're familiar with a lot of these templates that you would see on TikTok. You can have them right here on your desktop as well. You don't have to just use your phone for this. So uploading, you know, using one of these templates and then just dragging pictures or videos into the template like that. Now, if you click into the video on the bottom timeline, in your upper right hand quadrant, now you've got other controls. A lot of them are similar to the controls that we saw on the left. But here, you just have a little bit more control and you can get maybe a little bit more granular with these controls. So, but what I would recommend again is to play around, but you can change like the speed if you wanna speed up your video. There's um, a section here called curve. I don't really understand what that is. So if you know, then go ahead and play around with it. Um, I could learn if I wanted to, but anyway, these transitions, it's the same as what we just saw over there. So very similar types of transitions. A lot of them are pro. But again, I would recommend, now this tracking, that would be really cool. Again, it's a pro feature, but if you've got somebody walking down the street, you can track them with the video. It is, it is really quite interesting. So there you have it. You don't have to spend a lot of money to be able to create some interesting content like screen recordings, but you can. It really depends on what your budget is and how comfortable you are with the technology. I would recommend though that you practice with this. Just like anything else, practice makes perfect. I know I consider myself still a beginner. I'm not a video editor and nor do I necessarily want to be, but I don't have to. I can at least get some reasonably, I hope, interesting content out there. If you did find this interesting or helpful, it certainly helps me a lot if you hit the subscribe button. And of course, don't forget to hit the little bell icon in case so that you don't miss for future videos. Anyway, that's all for now. And uh, thanks so much for watching. Happy editing.